regular meeting on January 16, 2023, in the Mount Pleasant High School cafeteria. This meeting of the Mount Pleasant Public Schools Board of Education is a meeting conducted in public, but is not a meeting of the public. There is a time for public participation during the meeting, as indicated in the agenda. The purpose of today's meeting is to conduct regular business that requires action by the board. These items may include those discussed at a previous meeting or presented to the board for discussion this evening. As a courtesy, please turn off or silence your cell phones at this time and stand for the designation. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. some very special guests that we have with us this evening. We have a group of representatives from the Mary McGuire Elementary School Student Council. So I will introduce Angela Skadesny, Karen, Sarah Keebaugh, and Aaron King from McGuire Elementary to introduce their guests that are here with them. Thank you for being here. That's great. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, we have a group of students here from McGuire Elementary, and they were chosen today for um, their leadership skills, generosity, empathy, and different positive qualities that they show here in McGuire every day. And we just wanted to recognize um, you guys as board members for Board of Education Appreciation Month. So they have something to tell you, and they have a little gift. Um, each of them will be donating a book to our library in your name. So we're going to start. Thank you. 
Charles fourth grade class. I was chosen as a choir because my teacher recognized the leadership that I show at school. I wanted to thank Katie Reed and Amy Gardner for their leadership in serving our school. The books I have chosen to donate in their names are Starfish and Wildflower. Thank you for your service. Mrs. King, how about you all get on and I'll keep going. <laughs>
uh, John and Kristen have been coming um, all year, but we're happy to welcome Lisa. Lisa was teaching a college course on Monday nights in the fall, so wasn't able to join us, but now she's here with us. So welcome, thank you all for being here. That's tough to follow. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, listen and follow directions and don't go to the principles. <laughs> that's all you need to know. Okay, so we're just going to start with some of the things that's kind of been a nice highlights lately. So you had to get up either early or stay up late to watch the WNEM Sounds of the Season things, but we got the clip for you. Mount Pleasant has two of the clips there, including towards the end, they have a very nice friendly just in the sleigh ride. So that was one of the things. Um, we've also been able to. <laughs> There, there's other schools there too, so you can skip around except but we're we're on there twice and so on. Also our December athletes of the month was Grant Stoff for wrestling and Sedona Bayer for cheerleading. Today we got to honor a couple of our Rotarians there with Tyler Root and you know, Jaden Rule, who kind of excel in different areas. Tyler more in the fine arts and Jaden rocking it out in the career tech field in there. Like she's president of every career tech thing that we have and wants to go into broadcasting and so on. And so. before we got to meet Jaden last year, yeah, so it was perfect. That's right. Yeah. Um, and then we found out also today that one of our teachers, one of our English teachers, Josephine Sapansky there, she was named from the Michigan Reading Association as someone who was among the best and brightest emerging Literary Leaders in Michigan, and it's the Michigan Reading Association, 30 under 30, so that was a great honor for her. Other recognitions that we got to do this month is our students, actually right behind you, they get to put a Derek dollar in one of the boxes on the stage, and we draw about three a day. We have a huge building, so these are some of the students that we got to honor the past um, month or two. We are also wanted to invite the board, if you want to use your cell phone now or later, you can hold it up to the QR code and you can RSVP to join us on our PD day. Half of it will be in our building and then we are going to take our whole school. We have a lot of turnover, Lisa said, when's the last time you went? long time ago, so um, a lot of our staff has never been to the Zimwing Center, so we're, we'll go over there in the afternoon, we'll do a half day with a cultural presentation, sorry, half the time, and then a craft, and then half the time touring. We would love to have you join us if you want to, um, and yeah, that's coming up on January 30th. Okay. Something I got to partake in last week was go to the eighth, eighth grade scheduling at the middle school, so that was really fun. I got to meet half of the new eighth grade class. Um, we got to put all of our information into Zello. I know two of you actually have kiddos in the eighth grade um, class, and that was really fun. We are doing that Tuesday and Wednesday this week, too, and then our high schoolers will start scheduling. Our sophomore and junior, I'm sorry, our freshman and junior class are going to be scheduling in the auditorium, and then our juniors are going to sit down one-on-one -on -one with all of our counselors and kind of go over their credits, a little bit of an audit, and kind of see where they're at before they are taking their senior year. It's crazy that's already happening. I think we had, for trimester one, 538 different classes we offer. For, it's crazy. So it's kind of fun to be in that logistical nightmare. But I like <laughs> Okay, trimester one data, we um, took this and what I did is I looked at um, some of the areas that, you know, our failure rates or where kids did not receive credit and it seemed to be a little bit consistent with the core areas. Um, we are starting our NTS, well not starting, but we're every Wednesday meet with our NTSS group. So we're looking at academic, be behavioral, and just social emotional pieces with our students and how to improve on that. Um, this ninth grade class is our COVID year kids. I mean, every single year they were in middle school. Um, they did not have a normal year, and so I can attest coming up to the high school with them that they might need some different supports in place. So we have a great counseling team and our academic support that's just looking at maybe what we need to do differently for each grade because it's so different. Um, we're looking at tier one instruction and we're sending either new teachers or maybe veteran teachers that might need some more tier one PD to those PD pieces. 
Um, as you passed last board meeting, our ELA Foundations class will be brand new, which I'm super excited. We are going to kind of carry over what our middle school team is doing, and instead of putting those kids right in the trimester one ninth grade English class that might need some extra support, we're going to target them, fill in those gaps before they take English 9A. So I'm very excited to partake on that track with the ELA department. Our math cycle is going to be coming up soon, so I know when your department heads looking at you know, some of those areas in math, how can we change? You're already brainstorming with her math crew, which I'm very excited to present later, <coughs> maybe next year with you guys. Our applied physics teacher actually looked at his failure rates with modeling, and he's teaching his class a little bit differently, just, just changing it up. Um, maybe it's more tactile learning, maybe it's just slowing down and chunking pieces, but we're looking at that failure rate with each department and seeing what we can do better. Um, Lisa, I'm crediting her, she does awesome after school tutoring with our students Tuesday and Thursday. And we always have at least one department member in our library after school for tutoring. One thing I feel like we could do better is promote that um, a little bit more and I plan to do that in the upcoming WAC. And then lastly, I know district-wide we're trying to improve in attendance. When kids are here, we could teach them. And so I feel like as much as we could do just to stress that to parents or get them here, find a way that they can get to school and, um, and give them that success. So that's what we're focusing on. We're not perfect, but those are areas we're plugging away as a team here. All right, turn it over to Lisa. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of piggybacks off of Kristen's just because um, well, it's the behavior, but the skipping, they have to be in class to be successful, right? So I think the last time my teammate yeah. um, presented to you guys, it was like the cell phone was probably the number one. We've kind of worked on that, reduced that a little bit. It's still an issue, but not as much as you can see the skipping is kind of, kind of there. So we're working on it. Um, we have a lot of um, hall staff right now. We have three BIs and we have a hall monitor. So we've got them all in different zones and then just rerouting. Today, our first, we had a movie today, I'll explain that in a second. Um, but we had first hour prep teachers kind of in the halls too, rerouting kids back to watch the movie and all that. Um, and I think it was kind of eye-opening to see, wow, well, there's a lot of kids that try. I'm using the bathroom, we take the pass. They always say, oh, I have a pass, I have a pass. But your pass is for the bathroom, not to socialize. <laughs> Um, so we're working on that. We're working on the skipping so then they can be more successful with their grades. Um, and then one of our things, again, like Kristen said, is that after school tutoring is three to four, but then four to five is like an after school detention, suspension, but they're not really missing school. So they sit with me and they can make up work and all the good stuff. So, we don't want them on school more, but. Um, pretty much that's all for that. But I just want to explain, um, yeah, some fun things coming up. January 28th, we have our snowball that's coming up pretty soon. January 30th, like Kristen said, is our PD day. Um, the GI Tech Open House um, is February 2nd. Um, we have Romeo and Juliet. All of our freshmen are, I think it starts at about 12.30. They're all gonna go to the auditorium and see that. Um, May 16th is our freshman eighth grade exchange, or the eighth graders come over, it's not, I don't think it's freshman, but eighth grade exchange comes over here to see kind of what we'll be for the next year. Mama Mia is coming, they're like practice today, so that's kind of fun. And then I'll just talk very quickly about um, MLK Day today. We played Remember the Titans, and you know, an extended first hour, and then um, in the class the teachers could kind of have some conversation about the issues that they saw in the movie. So, and I've only heard positive comments, so hopefully that was good. Any questions for any of us? I, I have a question. Yes. Sorry. There we go. Um, for the uh, skipping, um, have you drilled down yet to try to see if there's any trends in what that's occurring? Is it a subject? Is it a lunch? Lunch. 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 Yep. That's the number one there to be at. And so, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> see how it says escort list, escort list for repeat skippers? Um, it's third hour right now, so we haven't decided 100%, but I think we're going to say no pass is third hour unless it's emergency. So then you call. We'll come to the room, escort you to the bathroom, and take you right back. I mean, it's, it's kind of like we're to that point. Can you, 
you yeah, remember. When you say lunch, can you expand that kind of that situation yeah. so we can understand yeah. it? Better. Absolutely. So first, you get first, second hour, and then third hour teacher. If that first lunch after second hour they go eat, okay, and all the rest of the kids go to third hour. If you have second lunch, you go for second, third hour, then you go to second lunch. So there's like two 30 minute periods where I'll just say Johnny, okay? Johnny's that first lunch, Johnny had a great lunch. Well, Johnny's buddies are in second lunch and he kind of wants to come and play with Johnny. You know, Johnny wants to play with his friends a little bit more. Because we do, we open up the gym and these kids need to burn off some energy, play basketball, and it's fine. Or socialize, but school is first. I think probably what happens more often than that is those students are finding places to hide for that half an hour between first and second lunch, so it's a shorter period of time where they are skipping somewhere in the building and then blending back in for sure. second lunch. So that, that's that's why it's a little bit easier also so and kind of, more fun. Kind of the data there. So um, after we looked at the cell phone piece, I was like, whoa, skipping. So what we did actually this week is we put all of the skippers, we looked by hours, we put photos there, and then we also put what lunch they have. So now our VIs can walk around with that and go, oh, you have second lunch, let me walk you back. So that's been super helpful too. And then I also forgot to say something, but I noticed one of our students talked about Ojibwe, the last board meeting. And I just wanted to tell you and just update you, um, we actually do have a dual enrollment program too and we can get students that piece. I forgot to say that we were chatting about it this morning, so I just wanted to let you know that's an option too if our students wanted to seek that out and we could broadcast that a little bit more too, okay? I do have some questions about the trimester one data. Yeah. The graph that you showed us, um, is it the whole high school or just the ninth graders? I wasn't quite sure. Yeah, that's kind of hard. So I, we took the dual enrollment piece off um, it is the whole school, and it is based on like how many students, all of the science classes, and then from there I then did it for each department based on each course to see it was ours. But I can literally pinpoint what courses we most failed course in each department, and then we'll talk about that at department coordinators meeting and looking at the trends. Like this ninth grade class, obviously it's a little different. Um, Darby and I are working together too to see if we can make that transition a little bit better with our 8th to 9th grade class. <coughs> yeah. Is it your feel that um, if the student yeah. didn't receive credit for, let's say, his science class, his or hers, that it's also the same yeah. students that are in the ELA, or do we see, yes. I'm guessing there's some of both. It's attendance. So if you look at, if I pull the attendance, which is in my other spreadsheet, you could see what kid has failed, like every single core class, and then how many days absence. Yeah, that's a huge trend. You have to be at school. I mean, very rarely, you know, I think you'd see like algebra one is by far our most failed class. And then, you know, I mean, freshmen fail more classes than seniors always. And, you know, when you look at the things, we it generally gets better every single year yeah. with fewer failures. And then I think we're no different than most schools where algebra, Spanish sometimes, you know, physics, those are hard classes for kids. And so those are where we have the most. But the non-engagers are the ones you're talking about that failing five classes sometimes. So it'd be interesting, and I don't need to see it. I'm just thinking if, if we split the two, but we take the ones that are failing the most. Uh, and take that out of the chart and see where yep. we at, so that it tells us do that. if we take that student factor out, yep. what it looks yep. like. I can uh, do that too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we also have academic support class for a kid who's struggling in multiple classes, so they could work on those as well. So, um, yeah, we're just looking at how we can help our student body, and um, we'll get there. But that transition from eighth to ninth is always tough, and so we want to make it better for those students. It's awesome that you can use that data yeah, to really inform, um, yeah. if, especially if we know the classes that are difficult, that's where the tutoring you know, makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, um, it's good to look at it. Thank sure. you very much. Just as we're wrapping up um, the presentation, I, I did want to make sure that um, our students that spoke last week knew that we did hear them. Um, 
Linda and I met with our high school administrative team this morning. We talked about lunch and um, open campus lunch and things like that. And while I, I don't know that liability wise we're able to move back to a full open campus where students are coming and going like we, we used to do, um, this administrative team has some really great ideas for some fun lunch options coming up this spring so that we can give students a different twist on their traditional lunch and that sort of thing. So I, I, I see a strong commitment here on making lunch more fun, wider variety, think food trucks, think fun, things like that. So um, as the weather turns and we're able to have some more of those kinds of opportunities, these folks are really invested in making that um, a better experience for our students. So I wanted to make sure that you all knew and that the students as well uh, knew that we appreciate their voice and that we are you know, working on doing that. Um, along that line, at, it would happen at Mount Pleasant High School, but also at all of our districts, we have heard at our last two board meetings um, about the concern um, regarding all of our students having free breakfast and free lunch. And um, I just want to make sure that you all know that that, that is a shared concern. Um, we very much want our students to all have free lunch, free lunch and free breakfast every day as well. Um, and Ginger has been working closely with our food service provider so that we can see if we have things in place. Our district has to be eligible to be able to offer that for all of our students and we're close. Um, when I say we, we need to be eligible, that means that we need to have enough students eligible for free or reduced lunch that pushes us into a category that allows us to give breakfast and lunch free for all students. So we're working on it and we're hopeful. Um, the best thing parents and students can do to help us is still complete the free and reduced lunch form. It's not too late to do that. The more forms that we get in, the better number that we have, the more data that we have, so that we might be able to offer that for our students. But um, we wholeheartedly agree that that's good for all students when we're able to do that. And parents too, right, for those parents that don't enjoy making lunches. I don't know if it would be possible, but if that information could be put on the lab, yeah. Um, for the yeah. high school, for at, sure. at least, uh, since you guys have control over that, yeah. um, maybe even with a link to that okay. form that parents could print out or, you know, anything like that. But specifically, I think that, that we are close. Um, you know, that way if anybody is maybe nervous or just hasn't taken the time. We actually could do a message. Um, we, we can work on a message maybe from Central Office that we can give to all of our administrators to put in all their newsletters because it really isn't only a Mount Pleasant High School thing, right? It, it would be district-wide that we would want to do that and, and we would try to do that. So we can get that information to our administrators so that they can just do another push for getting more forms. That's a great idea. I like the idea of being transparent about what we did in other push and so actually explaining the logistics because when I started, it wasn't obvious to me that it was, if we get a percentage of, the, of our district that's free of reduce it, that's all our um, students have access to this, and, and that's right. It's not it's not necessarily um, uh, intuitive, and so having it really clearly displayed might help. Sure. I think we've got someone who told Ginger from letters we sent before that kind of explained that a little bit. So thank you. Any other questions for our high schools administrators? Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Just a last item. Um, on my report this evening really piggybacks off of their presentation as well when they talk about scheduling and planning for next year. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everyone did know that we are knee deep in planning for next year. Um, so you know with a high school meeting with different grade levels that's probably the easiest thing to see but uh, Lynn has been working very closely with our elementary administrators to plan our kindergarten kickoff dates. We do have our first kindergarten kickoff coming up on February 15th. There's information out on our website, the buildings have that, so it's not too early to start signing up for that. Um, before too long, our middle school counselors will be going to Fancher and McGuire to talk to fifth grade students about coming into sixth grade. So although it may seem early, this is really that time of year where we're already looking at our student populations, our enrollment, and planning to roll up for next year. So um, if families have questions about next year, now is the time to start asking them and start getting the information that you need so you can be prepared. Is it appropriate to share the junior kindergarten change? Yeah, Linda, do you want to talk about that? Good evening. A few, we kind of tossed around looking at the um, terminology for our pre-kindergarten 
for years in Mount Pleasant, we've been called a developmental kindergarten. Um, and then just sometimes there can be sometimes a, a negative connotation with developmental. Maybe it could cause a con parent concern to think there could be a developmental delay, and that's really not the case. And so um, after lots of kind of emails and chats, we have proposed the idea of a junior kindergarten. So, you know, it's just kiddos that need a little bit more time, and um, they just need a few more skills and a little more time to get ready for kindergarten. So nothing will change curriculum-wise, um, but we just would like to propose that being change. And it really is still meant for our students that are the chronologically younger students, but still age eligible for kindergarten. And they definitely go through that discussion and screening process at kickoff, and they help parents decide what would be best for their child. And that's all for the report this evening. Thank you. Next, we move on to the requested financial report. Good evening. I have for you tonight the general fund and special service funds, revenue and expenditure comparison report for the month ending December 2022 and December 2023. I'll just preface this with um, these are not the updated budget numbers that you approved at the last meeting since they were approved in January. You'll see those next month for the January report. So these numbers may look a little bit skewed as a percentage of budget since budget will change. Um, for our general fund, revenue is at 28% of budget this year compared to 27% last year. And expenditures are at 39% of the budget this year compared to 41% last year. For our special service funds, our self-sustaining sports, our revenue is at 52% of budget this year compared to 300% last year. Again, those numbers will be skewed because of the addition of the payments to the self-sustaining sports last year. Expenditures are at 53% of budget this year compared to 20% last year. For our Children's Learning Center, revenue is at 27% of budget this year compared to 60% last year. And our expenditures are at 31% of budget compared to 50% last year. Last year we had received some um, federal funding. That's why last year's number was a lot higher than this year's. Some grants. Our nurse testing program, revenue is at zero as it will be. Expenditures are at 2% of budget this year compared to 0% last year. And our food service revenue is at 26% of budget compared to 55% last year. Our expenditures are at 36% of budget compared to 41% last year. This is a couple different things, just timing of when we get our reimbursement from the state this year. Also, this year's budget is much higher as we're um, having to do full pay meals. Unfortunately, um, the budget in revenue is a lot different than it was last year. Uh, our school store revenue is at 61% of budget compared to 53% last year, and expenditures are at 68% of budget compared to 47% last year. For our treasurer's report, general fund on November 30th, we had a cash balance of $5.8 million. We have receipts in the month of December of $4.3 million and disbursements of $5.6 million. That brings us to balance on December 31st to $4.5 million. For our debt retirement fund, on November 30th, we had a cash balance of $230,000. We had receipts in the month of December of $308,000 and disbursements of $106. That brings us a balance on December 31st of $540,000. For our capital projects fund, on November 30th, we had $24 million. Uh, receipts in the month of December of $83,000 and disbursements of $76,000. That brings us a balance on December 31st of $24 million. Thank you, Ginger. That brings us to our correspondence at this point. We have not received any correspondence from the board. Uh, and now we have our citizens' request to address the board on any agenda or non agenda item. We have Henry Warren. Hi, my name is Henry Warren. I just want to say the school is doing really great this year. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Okay. Next is our consent agenda. First, we have the approval of the minutes. Um, I don't know if we can do them together. Uh, of the January 9th, 2023 organizational meeting that was followed immediately by the January 9th regular meeting. I have a motion to approve these minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? 
Thank you very much, everybody. This returns our meeting. 